Hey guys, this is Eden, and today on this episode, we are finally going to jump into TensorFlow. So just first, a little bit about what TensorFlow is. And first I should mention, if you haven't seen the videos before this, definitely go check those out. There's gonna be a link in the description so you know what we're doing, because lots of the code we're gonna start out with today is just gonna be from that, and then we'll build on that. But essentially what TensorFlow is, is TensorFlow is a machine learning library that really, really helps with the whole machine learning, deep learning, all of that. And the reason it helps is not only because it's faster and easier to write, like with what most libraries do, but it also speeds up our computations by a lot. And it specifically speeds it up if you install the GPU version of TensorFlow. Uh, by default, you get the CPU version. If you wanna install the GPU, it's a bit more complicated, um, but I'm pretty sure if you're just installing TensorFlow, I think it's just pip install TensorFlow, TensorFlow. I might be wrong, but definitely just go check the documentation on it. It's pretty easy if you go to, if you just Google TensorFlow, it should hopefully be, yep, here it is. And if we just go to install, they have a little guide on it right here for figuring it out. So it's different for every system, so I'm not gonna do that right now, but there's also other tutorials out there. So once you've got TensorFlow installed, Nope, not YouTube. Uh, we can go ahead and start on this. So first we're just gonna do our imports, numpy and matplotlib, and then we're gonna wanna import TensorFlow. And TensorFlow, it's very common to just call it TF. Um, so when we're talking about TensorFlow in our program now, we'll refer to it as TF. Cool, so once we've got that, what we wanna do is I'm just gonna copy this from what we did in the last video for importing our data. We're still working with the breast cancer data set. So if you don't have that file in this, program directory, make sure you get it there, the breast cancer data. Um, and if you weren't here last time, it's on the UCI uh, right here. Um, but I'd really just go, actually this is the wrong one. So definitely go watch that last video and check that if you haven't gotten that yet. And then what we want to do after that is same thing as last time, mix up our data, right? So it's um, in a different order. Cool, so this will mix our data up so we're not going in some particular order. Uh, and then we're going to want to set our hyperparameters and our network variables. So things like how many input nodes we have, hidden nodes, output nodes, all that. And we're just adding one thing here. And the thing we're adding is batch size. And I'm gonna get the batch size later, so don't worry about that too much right now. So once we've got past this, now we're gonna start on the actual TensorFlow. And I kinda wanna talk a little bit about how TensorFlow works, because it's very different from what you're probably used to if you haven't used it before. And the way it works is you essentially use TensorFlow to build some model, some model, and in our case, the model where we are building is a simple neural network, right? Like we've been building in the past. And then you can run that model and run separate parts of it by like individually. So let's actually get to the coding and I think you guys will kind of see what I mean once we really get into it. So the first thing we want to do is make a variable for our x and our y. So our x data and our y data. And this is not the same as what's up here, right? We have the x and y data up here, but we need a placeholder for it in our model. And a placeholder is essentially a variable we put there. And when we run our model, we tell it what the placeholders are. So we'll have x is a tf dot placeholder. It's shape um, is none and then in and. So what this means, is it means this is a tensor. A tensor is similar to maybe a vector or something that's a bit different. It essentially works in a way so that it's like vectors within vectors. So this means that in the first layer of this tensor, we can have as many, as many of these other tensors as we want. Let me kind of write this out and I think it'll make a bit more sense. So if this is our tensor in this bracket right here, we could have something like a normal array, right? Like five, two, one, six, two. This is a tensor. The shape of this tensor is just four. And the reason it's four is because we have four variables. However, we can kind of break this down and do something a little more complex. So maybe in this array, we have another array. Maybe in this array, we have two more arrays. And I keep saying arrays, but I really mean like tensors. Um, so we have two more, and maybe this is three, two, one, and this is five, two, five. So the shape of this tensor would be two 
three. So the shape of this is two, three. And the reason for that is because we have two on the first level layer of this, we have two, right? We have this, and we have this tensor. And then inside of each of these, we have three values. So essentially what we're saying here is we're saying the shape of this tensor has the first layer can have, when we say none, it means it can have any amount, any amount. And then in, in is how many values each one of those sub tensors has. So this would look something like if we have this, we could have a bunch of these. It doesn't matter how many we have on this layer. And then because in, in is nine, we would have nine different values on each of these. Is that three, four? So each of these would have nine values. So that's what a tensor is essentially. It's it's a little bit strange. Um, it's pretty easy to get the grasp of, I think. And these are of type float. And then we're doing the same thing for our y. And when we run our model, we'll actually tell the program what these values are. Awesome. So now that we've got that, what we want to do is we want to actually initialize our weights and biases. So these are actually going to be a bit different because when we're making our model, we can't just make like a normal array or something. Everything has to be in terms of TensorFlow. So when we're making our weights, I, I made a dictionary right here, right? So W1 has the value of TF dot variable and this right here. Um, and W2 is this, B1 is this, and B2 is this. And essentially what we're doing is TF dot variable is just like a normal variable, except for TensorFlow. <laughs> There's not much more to it. So what we do is TF dot random normal just creates a random number between negative one and one, I believe. And this is the shape of that. So it will be in, in, by, in, hidden. It's kind of like a matrix, almost. You can think of it like that in some cases. And then I multiply it by 0.5, so our weights are between negative 0.5 and 0.5. And then I do the same thing for W2. And then with B1 and B2, I start them out as zeros. And I haven't mentioned biases before. And the reason I didn't do it in our past tutorials was simply because it was inconvenient. Now it's really good to have biases. They really help you out. And essentially what they are is in our network, after each node, after we're done multiplying all the previous layer by the synapses and adding those up, once we do that in user activation function, then we add what's called a bias to every single node, except for the input layer. And the reason we do this is think of like a line, right? So when we have the equation of a line, it's y equals mx plus b. So imagine we're modeling a line with our neural network, which we're probably not, or else you would use maybe linear regression or something. So imagine you're modeling a line well, if you just have y equals mx, right? Because that's what we have. We just have something multiplied by something else. We just keep multiplying. You might be like, hey, but we're adding things. And we are adding things, but those are all just multiplicatives of what have come before. Essentially, what we need to do is we need that b in there, that bias that will um, maybe offset our value from the x-axis. So if we're making a line, we don't want it to just go through the point zero, zero all the time. We have a y-intercept. Now, it's not the exact same concept, but it's very similar. We want to add something there. Um, and another reason for that is kind of if everything is zero, starts off as zero, we need some bias so that, because if you multiply zero by zero, you're just going to keep getting zeros, right? But if you add something, then you can get something other than zero. That's another reason biases are very helpful. So what we want to do there is we just want to initialize those to zero. That's kind of just a, a standard thing to do. Awesome. So once we've got that, we've got our weights and our biases, we want to just do our forward propagation. So this is going to be a little bit different, um, but not too different. So first thing we want to do is define our function. Oh, I did not mean to do all that. There we go. So what we want is to define our function, and it takes in some value x. First, we're going to look at this part, tf.matmol, and that's simply matrix multiplication. So earlier, I said that you can think of these weights, even though they're tensors, as sort of like a matrix. And that's because we can multiply them as a matrix. So just like we did before, we're multiplying our input by our weights as matrices, right? So that's just what we were doing before, except for now we're using TensorFlow grammar, TensorFlow, I can't think of the word. Um, but yeah, we're using TensorFlow to do it. And then once we've got this value, we do tf.in.add uh, dot bias add and we add our bias 
Now, we actually don't have to have this. I'm pretty sure it's the same if we just add our bias like this. It's just more clear, I think, if we do it this way. Cool. And once we got that, we want to apply our activation function just like before. So the way we do that is actually much easier. Now, you might have noticed that we didn't define the sigmoid function up here. And that's actually because TensorFlow does it for us, which is super awesome. And they have a bunch of like ones you can use. We're just going to stick with sigmoid because it's what works well for this. So we do tf.inin.sigmoid, and then we put in whatever we want to sigmoid. Pretty nice, pretty simple. And then all we want to do is the same thing for our output layer. Oh, ah, cool. So for our output layer, we do the same thing. We multiply our second layer by our second set of weights, add the second bias, and then we've got our output. And then we're just going to want to return out. And you might notice that I'm not using the sigmoid on this outmost layer anymore. And the reason for that is before when we were calculating our loss, we want our loss to be calculated after it was sigmoided or whatever, right? But TensorFlow, when we get to actually calculating the loss, which we'll do right after this, it calculates that for us in the loss function. And that's why we're not doing it right now. We'll just do it later. So if we go to the next cell right here, we can actually, first we want to get the prediction of the network. So we've made our placeholders, made our weights and biases and defined what um, fast uh, what forward propagation is. Now we actually want to set up a function that does the uh, forward propagation, gets our cost or loss, and then optimizes that or does uses gradient descent. Pred will equal in and forward x. This is just getting our prediction, right? Use doing our forward propagation. Then what we want to do is get our cost or loss. I call it cost. There's a difference between loss, but don't worry about it. It's pretty small. Um, and this is pretty long, particularly because of this function. It looks kind of intimidating, but don't be intimidated. It's not that complicated. All we're saying here is tf.inin.softmax cross entry with logits, 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 I don't know. Um, but all this is doing is calculating the loss for us, where logits is the, or logits is the prediction and labels is the actual data. Now before, you know, we did the L squared loss or error, and then we turned that into loss and all that. Well, TensorFlow is super amazing. This is the real beauty of it. It does that for us. This function alone calculates the loss, which I think is super amazing. And earlier I said, don't worry about the sigmoid after the output. Well, that's because we use softmax instead. Softmax, we essentially use it because something is either malignant or it's benign. It's one or the other. It's not a bit of both. Um, and that's what you use softmax for. You use it when there's one thing or the other. Whereas sigmoid can be used when maybe there's multiple things and you're getting a probability that each one's there. So this performs a softmax and then calculates the loss of that. So we're just calculating the loss and then we do tf.reduce mean. And the reason for this is because if we're passing in multiple examples at once, we don't want to have an array or a tensor of losses. We just want one loss, one value, right? Just like we had before. And tf.reduce mean, if we do have a tensor of losses, we'll get the average of all of those. And that's why we're doing that. So again, this is just calculating the loss, nothing more to it. The next thing we want to do is we want to perform gradient descent and actually update our weights. And remember how before we had to do all that calculus, it was a real pain, it wasn't really fun. Well, I said calculating the loss is the real beauty of TensorFlow. This is much better. That's all we need. That is the only one line that we need. It's amazing. And the way this works is we create a tf.train.atom optimizer. Atom optimizer is pretty similar to gradient descent. I'm actually not completely sure on all the little variations, but it, essentially it's very similar and it has a lot of speed ups and it's kind of a uh, sort of, I wouldn't say it's a standard because people use lots of other things too, but it's a good, like if you're just starting a new project, it's a good thing to try. It's a uh, very frequently used and it works very well with lots of problems. We give it the learning rate, which is alpha. And then we say dot minimize costs, right? This is essentially doing what we did before, right? We want to make try to make the cost or the loss so it's zero while we're minimizing it. This is all we have to do. The optimizer will now optimize our neural network by performing back propagation and gradient descent. Super amazing. I, I love this so much. 
it makes life so much easier. And then the only other thing we want to do is this time we're also going to calculate accuracy. I know we were doing it last time. This time I actually want to do it as we're showing the loss of each epic. I want to also show the accuracy. So I'm going to make a little function for that. And all we're doing here is this is a, this looks like gibberish. I know uh, it's not as weird as it looks. It's just a little shortcut to getting the accuracy. And essentially what we're doing is we're saying tf.argmax of the prediction and tf.argmax of the y. And remember that just tells us which index has the highest value. So if the same indices have the highest value, we're gonna check if they're equal. So if they're equal, it'll give us true. If they're not, it'll give us false. And that will essentially tell us true if we predicted the correct thing and false if we predicted the wrong thing. We cast that to a float. So one if it's true, zero if it's false. And then we take the mean of all the different values we have. So essentially, if we're working with a bunch of predictions and a bunch of Ys, it will take the average accuracy. Uh, this is just kind of a shorthand for it. So we've done quite a bit of work now. So I'm, I'm going to say let's wrap it up for now. Thank you very much for joining me and learning our first bit of TensorFlow. In the next episode, we're definitely going to actually start working with the data. And I'm sure probably finish this neural network implementation in TensorFlow. So there's a lot to digest in this episode. So definitely look through this. Uh, don't change anything up yet because we haven't actually finished the program yet. But once we get through the next episode, uh, I think it'll be really beneficial just to play with this. So thank you very much for watching. If you want the code, it's in the description below. Also, if you like this video and thought it helped you, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel and I really appreciate it. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.